Hey guys, just before we start, really, really quickly, we know that there are lots of different people with lots of different opinions on this whole COVID thing. We know that there are lots of people who just don't believe it's a problem and that the vaccine's all a hoax and the whole thing's a hoax. We, we understand a whole range of opinions from different people thinking different things about it. We accept all that, that's fine. We're not trying to convince anybody of anything or change anybody's mind about anything. Uh, all we're doing is responding to the questions we get. So this week there was a couple of things happening in Japan, so we've been getting questions about it. So this video is just a response, just saying what's happening in Japan because that's what our videos are. They're anything and everything about Japan and just observations about what's actually happening in Japan. So uh, abusing us or getting aggressive towards us because we have different beliefs from you uh, won't change anything. And you know, it's, we're not responsible for other people's thinking. We're not trying to change other people's thinking. Um, we accept everybody has a different opinion. As far as vaccines, we know some people don't think it's necessary and they think it's bad and everything else. That's fine too. Our thinking is if you don't want to take a vaccine, you shouldn't have to. So that's our thinking. So if you've got other opinions, they're welcome. Uh, on the topic, any opinions on the topic, not, not personal attacks, opinions on the topic are welcome. If you post links about the topic, um, they're welcome too, but please be aware the YouTube system catches links and we have to physically release them because YouTube's trying to stop spamming. So, and we'll re we will release them. If you look at our previous videos about COVID, all the different opinions are there. People who, who think it's a thing and accept the vaccine and think it's a good idea, and those who don't, and everybody in the middle. So, it's all welcome, okay? But please don't be abusive or aggressive because it's unpleasant and not necessary. and doesn't change anything, you know? We're not trying to change anybody's thinking. We're just telling you what's happening in Japan. If you don't believe it, that's fine. Um, some people are really interested in the statistics and some people have said we don't give enough statistics. All the statistics we quote are freely available from the Japan Japanese Ministry of Health. It's all available online if you search it. Some people have said that we're believing the nonsense from the media and we're sheep and all those things. We don't get our information from the media, ever. <laughs> um, if we do observe something in the media, we'll tell you we observe something in the media. But if we quote statistics or other information for you, it's come directly from the Ministry of Health, um, on, from their website online, which you can have a look at yourself. Um, it's all available. Um, we know some people don't believe those statistics either. That's fine as well. All we're doing is telling you what, what we observe. What we've observed on the Japanese Ministry of Health website is that uh, 100 to 130,000 people are being tested for COVID a day. Um, obviously some are because they show symptoms, others are because um, they're being tested for as a precautionary thing, like the Olympics, the Olympics uh, athletes and other people who participate in the Olympics. Um, of those 100 to 130,000 a day being tested, 15 to 20,000 people a day have been testing positive, which is pretty amazing because at one stage we're averaging about a thousand a day. So 15 to 20,000 a day is pretty amazing. A new all time high. Congratulations to the Japanese government on the new record. Um, now interestingly too, as they did in spring, some of you might remember in spring, they waited till the spring holidays, the uh, golden week holidays were over. And the day after they finished, they declared a state of emergency, right? And this time what they've done, we've just had uh, Obon, which is a, a week's holiday for most people, get a holiday. So the kids have got a few weeks, they've got five or six weeks holiday, but the adults had a week's holiday last week. And the Japanese government did exactly the same thing. They had six prefectures under a state of emergency and they waited till Monday. So the holiday finished on Sunday and then on the Monday they declared a state of emergency for seven more prefectures which is exactly what they keep doing. It seems like, it just the impression we get is that they want to be seen to be doing something about, about you know, uh, solving the problem or, or, or reducing the problem. But they don't want to do anything that's going to either damage the economy too badly or upset people too much. So they let, so Olborn Week, so what they did was their state of emergency is only a, 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 a request to restaurants to close by eight o'clock and, and for restaurants and bars not to serve alcohol, right? To try and keep people out of bars and restaurants, which, you know, we, what we see is between six o'clock and eight o'clock, all the restaurants are packed because everybody's in there trying to get dinner before it closes and it means that there's lots of people in there packed close together. But the bigger problem 
in Golden Week in April and also in Obon that we've just had last week isn't the restaurants and bars. The bigger problem is people hang out in huge groups, right? Obon is this ancestors thing. So traditionally Japanese people travel to their hometowns and their family home and they hang out together with their extended family, right? So all the aunts and uncles and cousins. I mean, we, we've seen that with our own family last week, but we also saw it with our neighbors' families and our friends. Now, everyone was doing it, right? And so they travel to wherever their hometown is, often it's in another prefecture, hang out with all the cousins and aunts and uncles and everybody else with, of course, they're eating and drinking, so no masks, small rooms, or outside having a barbecue, lots and lots of people together. Um, and then they go back to where they came from, right? After a couple of days of that. Or they go to the other side of the family, right? The in-laws in the in-laws house and do the same thing with another huge bunch of people, right? So basically what some people would call a super spreader event on a huge magnitude because most Japanese people do this, right? Most Japanese people do this. It's huge, right? And so what they did was they let them do that. They never said anything about it. They never said, don't do it or be careful or anything. They just sort of let that happen. And then that holiday finished on Sunday. And again, same as they did in spring, you know, last, last week's holiday finished on Sunday. On Monday morning, Japanese government said, we're going to extend the state of emergency to another six prefectures, which may bring oh, another seven, which means a total of 13 total of 13 prefectures under state of emergency. But again, it's all about image. Some of you might remember a video we did years ago on uh, image, reality and illusion or something. And it's all about image. So, you know, they, they call it a state of emergency, which last year when they did that, every time they declared a state of emergency, people took it really seriously and stayed home and didn't go anywhere. Um, and it worked pretty well. But of course, now that we're so used to this roller coaster of state of emergency. Oh, no, it's okay again. State of emergency, no, it's okay again. So people are pretty much ignoring it. And we saw that last week. Nobody cares. They're sick of hearing about it, you know. And actually, that's not true. You can't say nobody cares because some people take it really seriously. But its credibility has really diminished. So it doesn't sort of mean much. And then even then the state of emergency again is just asking restaurants to close at eight o'clock and, and restaurants and bars not to serve alcohol. And that's pretty much it. And oh, um, please don't travel to other prefectures. And it's really soft. It's really soft and it's just lost all its credibility and, and nobody's listening. And it's, it's too late anyway. Japanese say, Atonomatsuri, after the festival, which means it's the same as saying after the horses bolted. So they waited till Monday after everybody's already finished hanging out with everybody and traveling all over the country. And then on Monday when it was all over and everybody's back to work, then they said, oh, it's that new state of emergency. So it's just a joke. It's just a joke. They're, they're just trying so hard to make it look like they're doing something, but in actual fact they're doing nothing. And the thing that they should be doing, of course, lots of people believe, is uh, getting the vaccine out. And again, it's embarrassing. It, it's about 44% of the Japanese population have been fully vaccinated now, which is just not enough, is it? You know, and it's an embarrassment if you look at the, the first world countries and the, the levels of vaccination, you know, 44% is pretty abysmal. Um, some people ask us about that. Why is it that it's so low? Is it people that people don't want it? No, we do know some people are hesitant to get the vaccine, but the majority are keen. Um, the problem has been the old guys that run the place. You know, they, they're just so slow. You, they, you always see in the media, they say, they're talking about this or they're discussing that or they're thinking about talking about this or talking about discussing this or they're just so slow. And they're always behind the ball, behind the game. Um, so they took forever to get the vaccine rolling out. And then what they did is they made the, the towns and cities responsible for actually giving it to the people. And so the cities and the towns are run by old men too, who all sit around and discuss and consider discussing and talk about discussing how they're going to do it and then finally get it going. And, and some of those systems that they've developed have been terrible. You know, where we live here it hasn't been too bad, but, but we know other places not far away where it's been just abysmal, where nobody's sort of had it yet. You know, the over 65s have, have had it, but, but you know, they just haven't got the system to actually d give the vaccine. They just haven't got it rolling yet, you know, and people have to phone phone numbers and they phone the numbers and nobody answers and, it, you know, it's engaged all the time and they're just terrible. You know, they're just not good at adapting to new situations quickly. 
they've got to have lots of meetings and lots of discussions and lots of talking about it. That's basically been the problem. That's what's held it all up. So anyway, those people have been asking, that's covered those questions. Questions we get the most, you know. We, we heard this 20,000 percent, 20,000 people day testing positive. Yeah, it's true. Um, you know, the low vaccination rate, that's why. And yeah, and people asking, is Japanese people hesitant to have it? We know a couple, one lady, one of our friends said she didn't want to have the vaccine because she was worried about um, the side effects might stop her um, doing her chores at home, you know, looking after the kids and, and making dinner and stuff, and that she didn't want the side effects. Um, but no big, we, we know there are some anti-vaccine people in Japan, but we don't know any personally, um, and definitely nobody as emotional as, as some of the people that we get on the internet, you know. And again, we accept all that, you know, we accept all that. Some, you know, we've had people call us sheep and all sorts of, you know, you thought you were smart, but it turns out you're stupid and all this sort of abusive stuff. You know, again, guys, just before we finish this up, there's no real need for that. If you've got other opinions on the on the topic, on the COVID and the vaccine, please, you know, feel free to leave leave your comments, but, but please leave the abuse out of it. You know, there's no need, just because people have a different opinion, it looks like people will always have a different opinion on this. You know, that's fine, that's natural, right? Anything like this, there's always people that have different opinions on it, that's fine. We're not trying to change anybody's thinking, convince anybody of anything, you know? And if you've got a different opinion to ours, that's fine, you know? But, but you know, please, please, just let's not be abusive and, and insulting to people just because they think differently from us. Time will tell, won't it? You know, time will tell. If you're that confident that your different opinion is, is correct, you know, just be patient because time will tell. If, if it's true that it's all some conspiracy from the government to change our DNA and that, you know, there's all... It, well, time will tell if that's true, right? And then you can say, oh, I told you so, you know? Because we've had this a lot over the years. The other one we had that was similar to this was after Fukushima, when the nuclear plant, you know, and there was a whole heap of fly gin that ran away, lots of foreigners that ran away from Japan then because they thought we were all going to die. And there was people telling us we were crazy to stay here because we we're going to get nuclear poisoning and radiation poisoning and we we're all going to die and all that sort of stuff. And, you know, so far, not yet, but time will tell, right? 20 years from now, if I grow a third eye or something, you know, those people who said that at the time will be able to say, ah, I told you so. That's fair enough. That's fair enough. But in the meantime, let's be nice. <laughs> All right, that's more than enough of that. More videos coming soon. <laughs>